don't see the Kaaba. And people saying, this is the Kaaba. Look, this is the Kaaba. And I look and I don't see anything. I cannot see anything. So, he said, what you have done? All of this is recorded in the TV. What you have done? She said, I was doing sihr. And you know that some people, when they make sihr, there is some type of sihr they call amal. This type of sihr, they make, they put the sihr, and they hide it in one place where no one can reach. And as long as no one could reach this place where the sihr is, 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 is hidden, the one that, uh, the, that they made this sihr to harm, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, decided that this sihr will harm this person, the harm will be there. So, for example, the sahir can make uh, some black magic sahir to divide between a, a man and his wife, to make him hate his wife. Of course, they cannot do this. This harm will not happen if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that it will not happen. But it can happen. And they hide this sahir. They write some things or they make some sahir and they hide it in a place where no one can find. So she, she said, I was doing sihr, making sihr, and hiding it in the, in the graves of Muslims. I opened the grave, I dig, and I opened the kafan of, of someone, and I hide it inside the kafan. So no one will know, will think that I had it in that place. So this is what, what she had been doing. So he said, turn off the phone, turn off the phone. I don't want to speak with you anymore. Sheikh Abdullah Shahada, yeah. After one month in the same program, a man called him and said, Sheikh, my mother called you one month ago. She said, she was saying that I was doing, so you remember? He said, yes. He said, she died. And when we when we were carrying her body to to the to the burial grounds in in, in Egypt, it is very crowded. So, so you can see the burial grounds. It is in the city. <coughs> it took us about three hours to reach. It was very crowded. And when we reached it there, uh, and we, we we open one grave because in Egypt also, because of the places are limited, each family, they have one uh, grave for men and one grave for women. It's not haram? No, because as long as one person was buried there, you can, you can bury one man with one man, but not one man with one woman, unless she is his wife. No, of course, because they don't bury at the same time. After this man die, after one year, for example, another man died in this man's body is is finished, become dust, then you can bury another person. But for example, if two people from the same family died at the same time, either they can bury them beside each other if there is a place, or they can bury one of them here, and maybe another family, they can say, okay, you can bury him in our uh, grave. So uh, he said, when we came to open the grave of our family to bury my mother, we found a fire coming from the grave. Then they closed it. And then they came to another family's grave, women's grave. And they opened it, then they found fire. Then they tried a third one, and they opened it, and they found fire. So they said to me, because she, she, she had no relative except this son, the people said to me, we have nothing to do with your mother. We cannot do anything more. She has done a very dangerous thing, and just this is your mother's body, and we cannot do anything for you. It's not long time. Yeah, so everyone left me. All of the people, they left me and went. And I just sat beside her dead body crying. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I just sit and crying. My mother's body is beside me, and I'm crying, I'm sitting. Then I saw one man, one tall man, very tall and uh, strong man, 
and black. He came and he said, leave. He told me, leave. He said, how can I leave? This is my mother's body. I cannot leave it. He said, don't think about this body. Just leave. He said, I, I got afraid of him because he was, he, was, uh, he, uh, he was talking to me and his voice was very strong and he was very strong for me. I cannot fight with him. Then I just left because I'm afraid. <coughs> when I was walking away, he told me, never look back. Don't look back. So I walked, but I was worried about my mother. So I looked, I looked back, I saw my mother's body. It is raised in the air and fire, a lot of fire in it. And my face, my face, the side of my face that I looked, it got burned. So I ran away. So this type of Adab al-Qabr. And he said all of this story in the TV, the TV program, he said this story. This type of Adab al-Qabr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can show. So this woman, she wanted to make, uh, as she said, she wanted to make tawbah from sihr. But of course, if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know that she want to make a correct tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have forgiven her. But she, she, she did not make correct tawbah. That's why when she went to Mecca, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not let her to see Kaaba even. And then she died this way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can show us types of adab al-qabr for Muslims. Why? To make, to take care of our deeds. So this is about, of course this story about sih we have said, we have said but this, the, the story of tabi'in what we have said before, it is about the one who prevent zakah. Uh, this is about preventing zakah. If someone have not been giving the zakah and he wanted to make tawbah, what he have to do? What he have to do, he have to calculate all of the years that he have not been giving zakah. Someone can say, I cannot calculate, it is very difficult. I don't remember how much money I had and what is the nisab. You should calculate approximately and increase so that you guarantee it will never be more than this and you give this amount of money so you calculate approximately how much money you had at that time last year and previous year and previous year and you give this an increase so that you are sure that it, it will never be more than this amount then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive you so the tawbah is not here the tawbah, it is not enough that you feel sorry and you stop doing the then being that you give zakah from now on. No, you have to compensate what you, because this is a loan. This is a loan. And you have to give this loan back. So this is about zakah and about tawbah from uh, not giving the zakah. The next thing we speak about is breaking fast in the daytime of Ramadan in purpose. If someone break fast in the daytime of Ramadan in purpose. And we have described about fasting before and who, is, who are the people who have permission to break their fast. We talk about Musafir, the one who is traveling and the person who is sick and his sickness is related to eating and drinking if, one, if, one, if someone is injured, for example, this has nothing to do with food. But if, one, if someone is sick, that he has to eat food, or he has to take tablets, and if he doesn't take those tablets on time, then uh, he may get some harm. Uh, and the woman, during her menstruation period, or uh, the, the nifas, period of nifas after giving birth, all of those types, 
they have the right to break their fast. If someone is very old, he cannot fast anymore, he has the right to break his fast. But we are, to, we are telling about the person who break his fast in purpose in the daytime of Ramadan. In the daytime of Ramadan. Uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned fasting Ramadan in the five pillars of Islam. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in hadith, من أفطر يوما في رمضان في رمضان بلا عذر لم يقضه صيام الدهر وإن صامه. If anyone break his fast in the daytime of Ramadan without an excuse, without a proper excuse, then if he fasted all of his life, this would not be enough to compensate it, even if he have done. So if he started fasting all of his life to make tawbah from breaking his fast this day, this would not be enough to compensate. Uh, and Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu he said that the basis the basis of Islam are three other than the pillars of Islam the basis of Islam are three la ilaha illallah fasting the, the salah and fasting Ramadan so the pillars of Islam are the, 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 the most important five duties of Islam you have to do and the basis of all of this the most important three from those five is la ilaha illallah the iman in your heart and salah and siyam if one person left one of those three then he is kafir he is not Muslim so in this hadith, we have to think. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you break your fast in purpose, one day in the daytime of Ramadan, without a proper excuse, it will, be not, it will not be enough for you to fast all of your age afterwards. <coughs> so if someone was not fasting and he want to make tawbah, what should he, what should he do? Just one issue here about the people who are complaining from the long time the long fasting uh, time here in Norway so some people they say okay this alim said we can fast uh, based on the, the time of Mecca and so this, uh, this fatwa is very spread and this fatwa is wrong simply why someone can say how you can say it is wrong it's big alim who said this Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah he said uh, for any person who give fatwa to give fatwa in one issue he has to have two types of ilm the ilm of proof means that the ilm of Quran and hadith and the ilm of reality he know what he's talking about he know the case that he's talking about so when one alim in Egypt or in uh, Saudi, he never came to here, he never came here, and he never see the case or the condition here, and he give fatwa both based on a question being asked to him, it is not necessarily the answer is correct. Not because this person is not alim, no, but he does not have the ilm of reality. So there is the, a council of ulama called the European Council of Ulama. Those ulama are uh, big scholars, but they live in Europe. They are not Europeans, they are not originally, some of them are from Egypt, some of them are from Pakistan, some of them are from Saudi, and they live in Europe, and they know the conditions. So they keep the fatwa regarding this issue. They said that if the time of the night, if the day, if, 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 if the, 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 the day time, the difference between the day time and the night time is clear, then you have to fast from Fajr to Maghrib. If the difference, there is different, there is clear, clear different, difference. The night can be distinguished, the night time can be distinguished from the daytime, then you have to fast uh, the whole day from Fajr to Maghrib. So how you measure this? If the time of the night is four hours or more, what is the time of the night? The time between Adhan al-Maghrib 
between Adhan al-Maghrib, the sunset, and the sunrise, Ishraq. So in the timetable, you have the time of Salat al-Fajr, the time of Ishraq, 